The key to success on the field and in your backyard is a comprehensive game plan. So if you're building a fence or a deck this year, trust a Turkstra coach to design, quote, or order the right materials for your project. Visit a Turkstra Lumber near you to learn more. From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. Hello and welcome to the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. That is me. And we are in week eight of the CFL, seventh game for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, uh, coming up this week on Thursday. Coach O, it's great to see you again, as always, man. Uh, how's this week of prep going? Man, first of all, the weather's been amazing, and uh, prep is going great. I know that's a general statement, but uh, it's always good. The only way to uh, fight through these sorts of things is to get out on the field and get better. So that's, that's kind of why it's been great. Yeah, it's great. And you're right. The weather has been uh, fantastic. The uh, can't ask for for better than 75 and sunny as you're getting ready for a, a home game. Does it, you got to get tired of not only my question, but the question that you have to answer every day for uh, for our local uh, media sources that you know it's one thing for prep to go well, but you know it's of course about winning. I guess is it uh, is it uh, disheartening or does it get old having good productive practices but not being able to to get it done? No, because, you know, you can't, I get it. You, you sign up for wins and losses, and there's always a test at the ever, every week, and we have passionate fans, and I love that. And, uh, you know, we'd, I'd love to go 15-3 and three every year. Absolutely. That's a lot of fun. But sometimes there's years you got to grind through, and, and this is no different. So you're not going to get any change in the demeanor. Um, you know, you got everybody. There's coaches, cars I can't beat. I can't beat them in, and I've tried. Everybody's grinding and getting better. Uh, yeah, so I don't I don't mind it because it, it's part of the job. Uh, I don't think any less of anything, and I just think that people are passionate about the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and that's what I love about uh, being a part of this organization. Yeah, well, that's great, and there's still, uh, you know, one, one in five is not what you thought was going to be the reality uh, a third of the way through the season. But that said, there is still – uh, every single reason out there still to play, including the potential to be Grey Cup champions. Um, Coach, we've heard the the phrase, you know, not looking for moral victories a lot. You know, I've heard you say it. I heard Braylon Addison mention it earlier this week. And, of course, that's understandable. Obviously, the point is to win. But at the same time, I'm imagining being in your shoes, you can't ignore some of the good things that you're seeing from your team. I mean, you can't you, you can't not point these out, right? I mean, it's easier to learn from the things that you've done well. It's easier to to be it's easier to praise than it is to criticize and you know, especially coming out of BC, there was a number of them. Can you speak to some of the things that are going well right now even though the record is not what you're hoped for? Yeah, I think we, you know, the effort is outstanding. Like there's, you know, other people's bodies are on the ground. There's key, there's key plays that we emphasize that we wanted to make. There's key second down conversions that we made at over 50% clip. Uh, we able to take the ball away. Uh, we did, there's just so many good things. We always do that. I think that's more for the outside. You know, let's just say what it is. And that is we understand that it's about wins and losses. And, you know, and it's to sit there and point out everything positive after a loss, it gets, it gets lost in the interpretation. And, you know, people tend to think that you're not taking things serious and that losing's okay. It's never okay. It's part of what we sign up for. That's mm -hmm. just what it is. Half the teams uh, in the league lose every week. And in any sport at any level, half the teams lose. That's just what sport is. And so um, there, I can always take positives because I know what we emphasize. The, you know, the emphasis is on winning. But if that's how you're going to be defined, then when you lose, then what? You just quit? You know, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. You have to continually get better. Yeah, everybody has the answer. Everybody's favorite quarterback is the backup. Everybody's favorite play is the other one. And that's sport. That's fun. That's, <laughs> that's, that's just why you're – that's why they're – you know, fan is short for fanatic. And yeah. uh, that's exciting. And, that, uh, and you just, that's just what you sign up for. But I don't get defined into that. We, we roll up our sleeves and go to work. And we've all – you know, done things in life that uh, didn't go well or exactly the way you plan, you don't quit. You you surround yourself with the right people that you want to grow through it with, and you go to work. The uh, the BC game was different to me in, in, a, in a few key aspects. And as you watch that, 
I can think back to a list of things that the Ticats did well, and and notably, I guess maybe uh, that they had changed, that they were doing poorly, and that your team sort of got corrected. I mean, they had more a uh, 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 greater time of possession, more offensive plays, more first downs, more net offense, and that was against Nathan Rourke in a BC offense that w- that's been very very productive this year. I mean, that uh, in one sense, other than the score. <laughs> The, the offense beat the offense, and that's a little bit unusual. And again, the turnover story, the turnovers were not in the Ticats' favor, but those turnovers on downs, in my mind, kind of can skew some things sometimes. And look, they feel a little different than an interception and a fumble. Uh, and there was notable ones on both for both teams in, in BC. Um, but the good stands out in my mind in BC. And then, of course, it's still a 12-7 to 7, uh, end. So if you had to, if you had to point out a handful of plays or, th- or, or just a few things that, 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 that led to that loss. Cause it's almost, my question is it's e- it's harder to see those to me than it is in some of the games. And the reason why your team lost, is it easy for you to define that from B- from the BC game? Yeah. And it's, unfortunately it's a, it's a cliche and, and it is that the football does come down to four or five plays or whatever, however many a, a given coach wants to say. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. you can, you can, you know, those, Turnover on downs are crucial because whether you score or not, you're still eating another minute and a half of the clock. Uh, maybe it ends in a field goal, um, those type of things. So there, there's a couple second and longs that you'd like to get off the field. I thought, uh, you know, we, we stared at the quarterback in coverage where basically we had, we had good coverage and then stared at the quarterback too long. And, you know, he was able to keep the drive alive or the, excuse me, the play alive. You know, so those, you, you just give me two on offense, two on defense, and then, you know, special teams-wise, mm-hmm. there's always a, you know, we, we get on the right side of a block and Woods is probably still running. You know, he might be to Portland by now, right? But mm-hmm. um, those are, if you want to pull a few plays, there's a fo- few plays from each phase of the game, but that's football. And the fact that, you know, as you said, you know I'm big on the defense, playing the other team's defense and so on. And Feel like the offense uh, made some strides. Um, we just need to make timely plays more consistently. We didn't have some timely plays. Very, you know, specifically since you want to talk a little bit about that. You know, I thought being backed up with a minute 40 to go, you know, possibly before the half, where they could probably add to the lead. Well, we rattled off two first downs, and then went across midfield and actually had a field goal attempt that ultimately was unsuccessful. That's growth for this football team. Uh, we've been mentally at times we were two and out and we punted and now you're asking the D to not give them a first down and they're punting the field goal. And, you know, is that part, is that a win? No, but you talk about growth. Um, we hadn't been that. So extremely proud. And then, you know, the defense, um, you know, came up big, you know, a lot and special teams stood up against, uh, you know, a good returner and, and the team that's playing very confident off of a bye week and we're on a short week. So. You can go on and on. Um, we'll, it's got to be in the win column, Luke. We we know that. Yep. Um, offense taking some strides, and and I agree. And it and it seemed like uh, some some like you said some maybe second down conversions and first down efficiency that that wasn't or that was greater than it has been in the first uh, five games of the year. Everyone on the outside, of course, is in the dark about this. But when you take strides after bringing somebody like Kahari Jones into the building, can you speak to maybe some of his involvement in last week's game and potentially what uh, what it's going to be like going forward? Well, it's going to be an ongoing process. And when we brought him in, you know, as a consultant, it, uh, it was kind of introducing him to our environment um, and also finding out how he viewed our environment and our culture uh, coaching against it you know, and game planning against it in regular season, but also a meaningful, you know, West, or excuse me, Eastern semifinal game where it was an all or nothing thing. And, you know, that's, mm. that's valuable. And so, you know, I've, I've enjoyed speaking to him. I know he spent time with Mark and he spent time with Tommy. And I alluded to that when he came on board that this wasn't just, you know, optically, oh, well, he's going to get in there and coach the quarterbacks or he's going to be the play caller. He's, he's, he, He's a valuable resource as somebody who's done it all. And so as far as that, you know, he's observing practice. He's observing and listening to communication uh, in game. And, you know, as it goes along, he'll, he'll likely have a little bit more input. But what I've really been impressed with is him just wanting to see 
you know, how we do things and that versus saying, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's, that's kind of not what it is. He's been a, a sponge and he just has a real discernment about him, about, you know, where to offer stuff and where maybe just to hold off for a, a little bit longer in certain situations. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and uh, from an outside perspective, it's just a fascinating storyline to see uh, the impact that a guy like that might be able to have. And uh, going in, of course, to Montre- or against Montreal this week at home on Thursday, anything extra that he's going to be offering uh, for your uh, purposes? No, we've we, most of it, you know, in game is in game. You know, I've always told him that he'll sure. be able to you know, just talk to me about things that he's seen or situations that I may overlook or those type of things or what were he, what was he looking at? But we're pretty much in, in sync there. And, you know, if his office is actually, you know, kitty corner to mine. So he's, he's a, a fake intercom away, if you will, where I can just give yeah. a little shout and he can do the same thing. But we've watched a little bit of tape together. So in game is, is ongoing, um, from there. So nothing, nothing, uh, Nothing that would be terribly exciting to share right now, except for there's there's comfort there. Sure, uh, Carol Brooks uh, potentially healthy after you know having a, a, a quite a quite a battle with uh, with the injuries, uh, but he's back in the lineup. Can you say can you say what you're expecting about him or or, or what you're excited to see uh, from Carol being back in the lineup? I think it's just exciting to have just his experience, his smile, his knowledge, uh, his calmness. I just also want to say that I think Darby's done a fantastic job of of stepping in there, um, you know, in a role he probably hasn't played in, in several years, right? He's been more of a free Sam or a nickel type of guy. And so, you know, that's, um, you know, just Brooks Carroll was, you know, injured early in camp mm-hmm. and is unfortunate. And fortunately, we had somebody with some experience that w- that moved in there and in, in Darby. So I was excited about that. But, you know, it's Carroll's time to step up. As far as expectations, just to be himself, right? Don't go in there saying, oh, everybody expects you to have two picks and be this Eastern Division all-star. All-stars are votes. Go in there and do what you do. And when you have an opportunity to make a play, I'm definitely going to expect Carroll to make it. Yeah, you're right. And Carroll being himself is the uh, interception leader in the league last year and a, and a, a tied, I think, for, pa- for pass breakups too. So excited to see him back. And I agree also, Darby's name was brought up many times throughout the first six games. So I'm sure that impact will still be felt as well. We'll take a second to say that the Coach O Show is sponsored by Turkster Lumber. Do-it-yourself does not mean do it alone. So visit turksterlumber.com to learn more. They have a project coach that can help you with Whatever it is, building a new deck, new front door, window replacement, whatever the job is needed around your place, check out TurksterLumber.com. Uh, Coach, we got Montreal coming into Tim Hortons Field to meet you guys this Thursday night. What uh, what are you expecting from Montreal? What are they doing well coming off of their win versus Ottawa? That's just it. They're coming off a win. Uh, I feel like it was a hard-fought game um, on the road. And, they, you know, they got to be feeling good. It's a division game that they won. And, you know, they, they know that these are big games. And, you know, they play hard. You turn on the tape, you see that they play hard. They're, you know, I think their, their defensive front gets after it. I think they, you know, they're, they're just solid. And I think they're still, still finding themselves. They've lost some tough games that they probably feel like they, they could have won. But as you know, I don't, I don't like really speaking on other teams. And I just see what they bring. And they'll come in here with a chip on their shoulder and something to prove. And um, we do too. And that's, this is the fun. The lead up is fun. And eventually you got to kick the ball off and play the game. And you've been in some of these rivals. You remember some of the, uh, you've been in those meeting rooms where maybe I showed a clip or two late in the week about people chirping a little bit and that. And, um, but at the end of the day, they're going to kick the ball off at some point. And that's how the game's going to be decided, uh, not before the game. Um, and that sort of thing. It's always going to come down to execution. So I expect them to come in as a confident group, and uh, you know, and we're going to be just as confident. So, like I say, let's kick the ball off. That's great. Yes, I remember a clip uh, that you put on in a meeting room with. I want to say it was you and your team uh, in Hamilton. Was it an Eastern final where you guys uh, went to the Grey Cup and Mark Washington was on the other side of the, uh, yeah. the sidelines? Am I remembering that right? 
you were remembering it exactly that was a great right. one man that was cool and it happened that the coverage of that game you know we were watching not the coaches film but the tv coverage and the can't you guys both had your the spotlight on you so it was going from mark washington to orlando steinauer like back and it was very cool very good it's it's uh inspiring stuff makes the hair stand up on your neck it's fun yeah yeah thanks i remember that you got yeah. a good memory too <laughs> coach good stuff man good luck uh heading into uh uh, the end of your prep week, and we're looking forward to the kickoff this Thursday night at Tim Hortons Field. Awesome. Thanks, Luke. Another episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker is in the books. Let us know your thoughts. Email us at gamedayatticats.ca. Coach O and Luke are back next week to discuss the latest from the locker room. Subscribe to the Ticats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.